no more be served. The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Now prior to 1948, were people still talking about the great exodus out of Egypt? Yes. Yes. Read. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. Brought them up from out of where? The land of the north. From out of the land of the north. Were the so-called Jewish people in the land of the north or were they in the eastern hemisphere in Germany? They were in Germany. They were in Germany, but God says we're going to be brought, brought forth out of the land of the north, which is North America. Right. Where the Negroes are scattered. Where the Latinos are scattered and the natives. Read it again. The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel mm -hmm. from the land of the north. Uh -huh. And from all the lands where he had driven them. Uh -huh. And I will bring because them. Because they were driven out of, out of Israel in when? 70 AD. Read on. And I will bring them again uh -huh. into their land uh -huh. that I gave unto their fathers. Uh -huh. Stop right there. So God said when he brings forth the Israelites, the true Israelites, who are you so-called blacks, you so-called Latinos of native Indian descent. People's not going to be talking about Egypt no more. Because this second time, this exodus is going to be so great that people are not going to be speaking about Egypt no more. Are we still speaking about the great exodus in Egypt? Yes. So that means the so-called white man over there in Jerusalem calling himself a Jew is not the real Jew. Because they needed America and Great Britain to place them in that land. And ever since they were placed in that land, it's been all hell. They've been all hell fighting against the Palestinians. That's right. Because the Palestinians know something that you so-called Negroes don't know. They know that we're the real Israelites. Right. All right? So, the, the scholars also know that as well. When I was in the back and I heard you make a statement about, well, aren't you all from Africa? Yeah, yeah. Let's deal with that. Uh, Jeremiah 14, 2. We're gonna, we're, gonna put, we're gonna make a few points to show you that all black people are not the same. Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. Read it again. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. The Jews are black unto the ground. Now, why is it saying that? Is it saying that because they're not black? Give me Song of Solomon, 1 and 5. I'm Dominican. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm light skinned, bro. You know what I mean? I just want to ask you a question first, and we'll deal with that. So, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Song of Song, read verse 1. Songs of Solomon, 1, verse 1. The Song of Song. These are the songs that Solomon written, that he wrote. Which is Solomon. Which is Solomon. So Solomon is the one that's writing this. Verse 5. Verse 5. I am black. I am black. But comely. But comely. And the word is and comely. Read. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. As the tents of Kedar. As the tents of Kedar. Spell that word Kedar. K-E-D-A-R. Kedar. Spell it again. Get that red Bible there. Kedar. K-E-D-A-R. Kedar. So Solomon said that he looked like the like the tents of Kedar. Spell it again. Kedar. K E D A R. K E D A R. Now let's see what the scholars have to say about what that word means. This is in the back of the, of the Bible, so you can understand the Holy Scriptures. Let me show it on camera. In the back of this Bible, they have what is known as proper names, where they are explaining what certain names mean. Key down. Spell it and tell them what it means. The word Kedar. Spell it. K E D A R. Dark skinned. Dark skinned. Read it over here again. Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon 1, verse 5. I am black, but comely. Oh, he taught us of Jerusalem as the tents of Kedar. So I am dark skinned like the tents of Kedar. That's what Solomon is saying. So my question is after that. Was Solomon in Africa? He was, he was, so we got so we got the complete picture now. So where are the descendants of the Jews on the earth today? Where are they? Mm. 
Mm. Well, I mean, they're, they're all over the place, I guess. I mean, if that's the what case. What are they being called? Uh, give me Jeremiah, <laughs> give me Jeremiah 17 to 4. Where, what are they being called? They're called black or... So the reason why I'm saying this is because I'm letting you know they're not African. Read this. Jeremiah 17 verse 4. Listen, and, listen. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. Thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from your heritage. That I gave thee, and I will call of thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land that thou knowest not. What land is that? America. How do we get here on the slave ships just like the Bible prophecy says? Come on. For ye have kindled and fire in my anger. Because we made the most high mad. We made God mad. Now, give me the Bible dictionary. Where is that? Right here. Okay, that's enough of that. Hold on. Ruddy. Give me Ruddy first because they got some lie out here saying that David was Ruddy. Because it spoke about that when isn't, it was talking about fighting. Listen to me. I'm going to explain it. When it used to, when when the white man says ruddy, they're trying to say he's red. He's red, yeah. yeah that's, that's a damn lie. That's what that's ruddy what means that's tender. What the ruddy means tender. Right. Read it out the dictionary. Right. Ruddy, a word used to refer to a red or fair complexion. Now, is that the truth? Let's find out. In contrast. In contrast. What does the word contrast mean? Opposite. Oh, Opposite. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. glad you all. I'm glad you all point. Right. Read it again. A word ready. A word used to refer to a red or fair complexion. So he's th this man that said this. He said the word is used to refer, but that's not telling you what it means. In contrast. In opposition to the dark skin of the Hebrews. Was David a Hebrew? So he was not red. Right. right. Now give me Genesis 25, 25. Let's find out who the red man is. Genesis 25, verse 25. And the first came out red all over like an hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. That's the red man that's in the Bible. That's David right. did not come out of that line. Right. David came out of the line of Jacob. That's right. Which brought on the 12 tribes of Israel. Read it again. And the first came out red. And the first child that came out of Isaac, I mean, came out of Rebecca, Isaac's wife, came out what color? Red. Red. Why did they name him? Why did Isaac name the baby? Why did he say that he came out red? I'm asking you. Uh, that was the skin color, I guess. Why, why, would he, why would that be written down in the Bible, that he came out red? Well, I'm trying to see if our people are thinking. It's, it's, uh, it's specifying. It's specifying for a reason. Why? I don't, I don't know you why. don't know why. Of course I, you don't know why. But it specifies it though. It specifies yeah, yeah, it for a reason, but you don't know why. It doesn't specify his brother's color, it specifies his color. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. And, but you still don't know why. I, I don't know. Give me Genesis 2 and 7. Let me help you. Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God for a man of the dust of the ground. Of the dirt. So you can understand the deep soil. He made who? Adam. Right. Read it again. And the Lord God for man of the dust of the ground. And the Lord God made Adam from the dirt of the garden, so you can understand. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. Now let's find out what color the ground was. Go back to Jeremiah 14, two. Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground. So the Jews and the ground is black which is the same ground that Adam was made out of, right. a black man. So now let's go back to Genesis 25, 25. Genesis 25. So, so you can get the understanding. All of the people that came from Adam all the way down to Esau were all black. That's the reason, listen, that's the reason why they did not have to record these, these, these babies color, because they all came out normal. You understand that? They all came out looking like their mothers and fathers. But when the difference came, that's why they wrote it down. That's why they specified That's why they specified. I'm reading again. Genesis 25, verse 25. And the first came out red. And the first came out red. It was worthy to note that because a different color was coming out. Which is these so-called white people. Their forefathers, they know 
They know who they are in the Bible. They know that they're the children of Esau. That the Bible speaks of. They know that. And the first came out red all over like an hairy garment. Like a hairy garment. Because he was hairy like Chuck Norris. Burt Reynolds. Hairy as hell. And they called his name Esau. And they called his name wasted away is he. Meaning that his brown color was missing. That's why Isaac named him that. Because his brown color was missing. He looked, because so you can understand that word Esau is a condition. Meaning his color was gone. That's why he named them that. Now, give me the Bible dictionary by hand. Esau means wasted, means wasted, wasted away, away like, is he. Like he got his color, his, color was, his color was missing. The word is Es, Isha, Wa. So you can understand, the Hebrew word. Meaning to, to wait, waste it away. Isha, Isha, Sha means to waste away. The Ra at the end means he. Wasted away is he. And the first came out red. And the first came out red. All over, like a hairy garment. And like a hairy garment. And they called this man Esau. So you can understand the white man is not a Jew. Now, give me Ham. The Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Ham, the youngest son of Noah. Ham, it said he was the youngest, he was one of the youngest sons of Noah. He's actually the middle boy. Read. Born probably about 96 years before the flood. And he was born 96 years before the flood. We need to check it out. Come on. And one of eight persons to live through the flood. And Ham was one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Ham became the progenitor, which means father of the dark races. Listen. Not the Negro. But Ham was not the father of the dark people you call Negroes. The Negroes, the Hold dark races. That's the that's the catch. Right. Read it again. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Ham became the father of the dark nations. What does he mean when he said the dark nations? Meaning the four groups that came out of Ham. So you can understand Canaan, Put, uh, Cush, and Mizraim. Those were the four sons that came out of Ham. Those were the dark nations that he's talking about. Read it again. Ham, he became the progenitor of the dark races. He, built, he was the father of the dark nations. Not the Negro. But he was not the father of the Negro. So what's happening here? How is it that the scholars were able to write in their dictionaries that Ham was the father of four dark uh, countries in Africa, but he was not the father of the people you call Negroes? How was he able to do that? Absolutely. In other words, in order for them to write that, they have to know who these Negroes are. They know that they're the Jews. That's the point. That's the point I'm showing you. They know that the so-called Negroes in America are the real Jews. They know that. That's how they can write it in their books. That our people sit there and read it and won't catch a damn thing. Because their mind is gummed up with lies. How in the world they couldn't even figure that out? That Christ himself is a black man. How is it they couldn't even... They've been in church all their lives and never came to that understanding. And it's written in all of the Bibles. Yeah, well, we grew up believing that it was like Christ was. Sir, so if you don't mind staying in front because you're blocking the camera. Why? Is, is, is that in the Bible? Is Christ? I'm asking you. Is this in the Bible? Is this in the Holy Bible as Christ? No, no. So where did this come from? Huh? I'm asking you. Do you know? Do you, do you actually, let me hold it up. Do you actually know who this is? This is actually a man. This is a man of history. I've never heard, heard of this guy. Never heard. I've seen these pictures, but I don't know who they are. But no. this, this, see this name here? Yeah. Look this guy up. Okay. Cesar Bosia. You know who he was? He was the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Okay, that's who he was. His, his father, Rodrigo Borgias, who became Pope Alexander VI. Okay. And so all these drawings who are, the, are, are the drawings of him? These are the drawings that Leonardo da Vinci I mean, all painted. these characters are the drawings of him? These are the different ones that you're familiar with. That's the reason why we're talking. Right. Because they were all modeled yeah, after this Caesar. Right Understand my point. Yeah. Right. Well, this is actually him. This, this one is him. That's the actual, this is the actual man before they said he was Jesus. You understand my right, point? Right. This is actually Cesare Borgia. And this is, right. this is the model that they, they made they took him and modeled him for the new image of Christ. 
and gave it to all our people and our people sitting up there in church to us oh Jesus, Jesus and have not opened the Bible yet to find out that Jesus was a black man. Let's show you that's some serious deception. Give me that in Revelation. Deceive the whole world. Because it took, it, took a, it took a demon to be able to deceive everybody to the point where they actually believe this is Jesus. And no Bible on earth says that Jesus look like this. So what kind of deception are we talking about? Some major witchcraft, so you can understand. You got it? Read it. Revelation 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceived the whole world. How did this dragon deceive the whole world? With Christianity. I'm going to tell you straight. With Christianity, because they got everybody running around talking about all nations can be saved when Christ come out of his own mouth and said that I'm only here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Out of his own mouth. The angel that spoke about Christ before he came on the scene came and told Joseph that your, your wife shall have a child and you shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. So, he, so he didn't come for the whole world? No. What world What world did he come from? You referring to John 3.16? Yeah. Let's get that. Let's get yeah, that. Yeah. John 3.16. Let's touch that. Hey. John 3.16. Let's, let's find out. John. Hey, you're taking the Bible out of context. We're going to find out now. John 3 verse 16. I'm going to show you that your churches have done just what I just quoted. That's, that's one of the most famous scriptures. That's right why there. I'm reading it. Yeah. Because our people have been deceived by the white preachers that have lied to them and got Negro preachers teaching the same thing. John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Now you notice a lot of people stop because they, they're familiar with this. That's whosoever, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So listen to me. When they heard this verse, they said, oh, they got to be reading out of the Bible. If we read another verse, they won't know what the hell we're talking about. That's not but true. they, okay. Now, hold, right, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Well, I'm, decide, I'm going to find out, sister. They're familiar with this. Yeah. They have it on their handbags, most of the women. They have it on bumper stickers on the cars. It's all over the place. And people have been deceived when they got to the word world and whosoever. Right. Now, let's let's break it down. Go to Acts 2. So whosoever is not everybody. I'm, I'm going I'm to show you. I'm a, it's, the best thing to do is to let the Bible speak. You want to know why it's good to let the Bible speak? Because church preachers have been talking too much and not enough Bible. Preaching, no teaching. <laughs> Absolutely. Let the Bible speak. Acts 2, 21. Let's, Acts chapter, let's find out who the whosoever is. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if I come among you and I say whosoever, who am I talking to? Anybody. I'm talking to anybody on the planet? Let's find out. The men of Israel hear these words. Is everybody on the planet the men of Israel? Obviously not, no. Read it again. The men of Israel hear these words. Read the whole verse because they don't want to get accused of taking things out of context. Acts 2 verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's, the whosoever is who? That's the question. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So who's not going to hear the words? I'm going to make it simple. Who's not going to hear the words? Anybody who's not of Israel. Thank you. That's plain and easy to understand. Right. So That's whosoever is right. Israelite. He was talking in context. He was talking in context. He was talking in the context the of, of the. He was. I'm gonna tell you. He was talking into. The, he was talking in the context of which his father God sent him. Give me Matthew 1:21. That doesn't. That doesn't disqualify the whosoever, though. You know, the whosoever still stands. No, okay. Whosoever, just like the word world. Let's go back to John 3:16. We're not done with it yet. John 3:16. John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. Stop. So we dealt with the whosoever, right? And there, apparently there seems to be some confusion about what whosoever means. Whosoever we're not world, confused yeah. over here, but we're going to help you. Right. The whosoever, we just read it out of the Bible where he said, ye men of Israel hear these words. Right. So there's no confusion. Our people have gummed up because they cannot. It's like somebody has been trained so well to do something. You understand? Yeah. And then when the truth comes, they can't take it. And then, there you go. Yeah, They've been conditioned. Yeah, yeah. I understand it. They've been conditioned to accept lies. I'm going to give you another example. What color am I? You're brown. 
Okay, you had to think about it. Because most people would say black. You understand? Okay. So, but most people will respond and say they're black. There's not a black man on this earth. There's not a, there's no white man on this earth, so you can understand. People range from a brown, from a light brown to a dark chocolate. Read it again. Where we at? John 3, verse 16. For well, God so loved the world. Now we're going to deal with the word world. What world was Christ talking about here? Was he talking about everybody on the planet? That's what the people say in the churches. Let's find out if that's what it really meant. That's, that's what I believe, yeah. Okay. I believe so. Now I'm going to help you. Give me John 17 and 9. The same book of John. Same book of John. John 17 and 9. John 17 verse 9. This is Christ himself again speaking. I pray for them. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I pray not for the world. So wait a minute. Something must be going. To, when you, our people have been conditioned he prays to for think, Israel, not for the world. Right. right, right. So understand my point. Just let me explain. It. You're right. But here's the point. Our people have been conditioned uh, to say that the word "world" meant everybody. You listening? Don't worry about that. Both sides deal with that. You, you follow me? Yeah. The word world have people have been conditioned to believe that the word world is talking about everybody. Right. But Christ is letting you know that it's not talking about oh, everybody. Oh. Come on. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I pray not for the world. But for them. But for them. Which thou has given me. When you say but, what does but mean? But is um I, I don't know the, the correct uh the correct uh, description of five by the mean. It means it's a it's a it's a it's a specification. It specifies it specifies the uh, the context. Right. When you say but, that means it's a con it's, it's going contrary to what has already been stated, right. or contrary to the understanding that's that's apparently being laid down. Right. John 17 verse 9, I pray for them. Oh, you brother stay on point, all right? That's the most I deal with that. You're still on point with this. Come on. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. So the world in John 3, 16, obviously, is not talking about the world that everybody's thinking. I still, but for them. But I pray for them. Which thou has given me. I pray for them which thou, the thou is God, which thou has given me. Who did God give to Christ? The disciples. Because that's who he's talking about in this chapter. Right, right. Read it again. I pray for them. I pray for the disciples. I pray not for the world. I'm not praying for the other nations. But for them which thou has given me. But for I pray for them which you, Lord, have given me. For they are thine. For the Israelites are yours. And all mine are thine. And all my people are your people, Lord. And thine are mine. And, your, and they are mine. So it's clear. So now let's go back to John 3, 16. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Now we're going to find out what is the context of why Christ is saying this. Go to verses above this. Uh, John 3, this is something that they have not done. Verse 14. This is something that they have not done in the churches because the churches don't teach the history behind what Christ was saying. This. John 3. John 3. Let me let me slow it down. Let's do it again. We're in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. The famous scripture that everyone quotes. Everyone knows about it. It's our handbags and all of that. So what I said, we're not gonna we're go, we're not going to take the scripture out of the context of the chapter. Like most people say, that's what we do. You follow me? I'm going to prove that the churches, in fact, have done that. Because they took John 3.16 out of the context of the chapter. Now let's find out what context was Christ speaking. Read John 3.16 again. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. We're going to find out what world he's talking about. That he gave his only begotten son. That he gave his only begotten son, Christ. That whosoever believeth in him, that whosoever believeth in Christ, should not perish, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But have everlasting life. The question is, who was Christ talking to? 
Let's find out. Two verses above that. John 3 verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Wait a minute. Why in the world is the New Testament quoting talking about Moses? I thought the Old Testament was done away with. Why in the world would Christ be quoting Moses? Why would he be going into the history with Moses? Because Christ said, I think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. He wants to show historical evidence of what I So that's why he's quoting it, because the whole Bible is written of Christ. Read it again. John 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted it up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, what is that talking about? I'm asking you. Uh, the wilderness, um, what was going on? What is he talking about? Were, I want somebody to go to church and tell me what this the, children, the children of Israel, they sinned and, uh, and God sent serpents. My and goodness, you're people. right. That's exactly yeah, what happened. Yeah. And they and killed 23,000. He killed them all. He said God told me to lift up a uh, place of serpents. Right. Yeah. That symbol that they have on the ambulance in the hospital, right. that's, it comes out of the scriptures. Okay, read it again. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So eat, read it again. Let's read it slow. Let's get the words. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. And as. What does as mean? As. The same way. The same way. Right. And even as. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So the same way that Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. The same way must the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, be lifted up. Who did Moses lift the, lift the serpent up to? For the, for the children of Israel. Well, let's find out. Go to the book of Numbers. Numbers 21, verse 7. This is the history. Verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. And they bit the people. Let's find out what people it was. And much people of Israel died. And much people of who? Israel died. And much people of who? Israel died. And much people of Israel died as a result of being bitten by the snakes. Therefore, the people came to Moses. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. We have sinned. For that, we couldn't, have, hold it. that could not pertain to other nations. Because the other nations, why, why that could not pertain to other nations? I'm asking you. Because the other nations were sinning and this wasn't happening to them. No. Why, this, why, read this statement again. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. We have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord. So my question is, what? When it said that they have sinned, what is the sin that the Israelites were doing that the other nations could not do? And um, why? Uh, I, don't, I don't remember off the top of my head. Who was given the law? Moses was given the law. Uh, now who did Moses the give the, the So who did Moses give the law to? The Jews. The Israelites, right? The Israelites. So if he gave the law to the Israelites, what laws did he give them? The commandments. The commandments, yeah. So the law. if you break, give me sir, give me John. Hold that. Don't, don't lose my Give me John, first John 4, 3. three and four. First John 3, verse 4. Listen. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Whosoever committed sin. There's a word whosoever again. Again, it's going to let you know that whosoever committed sin ain't talking about everybody because everybody did not have the law. I'm going to read that next. Read it again. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Trans breaks the law. Whosoever commits sin breaks the laws of God. So in order for you to be in sin, you had to have the law. The law had to be first given to you. Right, right. I cannot, if, if there's a law in Germany that says you cannot drive on the right side of the road, can I stop you over here and say you broke the law? No, because that law does not pertain to you. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth, meaning breaks the laws of God. So now, was that the end of it? For sin is the transgression of the law. So when a person says that they're in sin, they're saying they're breaking God's laws. 
So you want to know what that really means? That means there's a whole lot of sinners among the nation of Israel. You want to know why? Because our people don't even know the laws. Our people don't even know the laws and they run around talking about Jesus saves. They haven't even understood what the Bible's talking about. So how, could they, how could they repent if they don't know the law? That's what we're here to do, teach them the law. We, whosoever committed sin, transgressed also the law. Transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression or the breaking of God's law. Now give me Psalms 147. Psalms 147, verse 19. He sheweth his word. He showeth his word. Unto Jacob. Unto Jacob. His statutes. His statutes. And his judgments. What are statutes and judgments? Laws. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He only showed them to Israel. Keep reading. He had not dealt so. God has not dealt so with any nation. No other nation has God's laws. That's what he's telling you. So there's no way they could talk about repenting because the laws do not apply to them. That's the reason why we went into captivity because we broke God's laws and punishment fell upon us. That brings me back to my original question then. How is it that the, uh, the people and the people that call themselves Jews in Israel, how is it that they're practicing God's laws? Because it seems like they're practicing God's laws. I know that you used, not you I know said the right word. You said seen. You, you know, said I, seen. I know that you put the time of the. Uh, okay, I'm going to prove, prove to you. I'm going to prove to you right now that they're not keeping God's laws. Give me Exodus. Let's look for it. Exodus 20. I'm going to prove to you that they're not. That's why you use the right word. You said seen. They seen. They only seen because our people don't know the Bible. You got it? Exodus 20, verse 16. Listen. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false witnesses. Thou shalt not bear false. What is a false witness? Uh, it's a lie. It's, it's a, a lie. lie it's a lie. So if it's a lie, how in the world are they going to call themselves Jews? They're lying. They're lying. So they're not the Jews. So they're not keeping God's laws. <laughs> right. You've been, once again, you've been conditioned to believe lies. Right. So because they're saying they're not the Jews, even though it seems like they're, they're keeping the laws, but because they're not I the heard. Jews, they're lying. They're lying. They're they not keeping the laws. This does not, they are Idumeans, so you can understand. Edomites. They're no different I, from the regular white people. I read that over here. I mean, They're I, no I, different I from the regular white people. But I'm not done with John 3.16 yet. Go back to Numbers. Let's finish that up. Numbers 21, verse 7. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Come on. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us, the poison snakes. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. Make thee a fire, meaning a poisonous snake, and put it on a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. That everyone that looketh upon it shall live. That is bitten. So who were the people that was going to be given that? The Israelites that was with Moses because it said that much people of Israel died. So now you got that understanding. Now let's go back to the New Testament. Now we understand the reason why Christ said what he said here. John 3 verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So he's, he's referring back to the history that we just read. Even so. Must even, even the same way. Read it again. Let's go through it again slow. And as Moses, this, and as Moses, the same way that Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness to the Israelites, even so, even so, meaning the same way, the Son of Man, the Son of Man is Christ, be lifted up, being lifted up to the same people, the Israelites. That whosoever, that whosoever among the Israelites. Believeth in him that who, whosoever among the children of Israel that believe in Christ, what is it talking about? Because the children of Israel were the only ones that was given the law. So they were the only ones that had the chance to repent. So Israel's the only one that could be saved. The Israelites only. These 12 tribes here. Not the people over there. These 12 tribes. That's what this is about. So-called Negroes, I'm West Indian, so Haitian, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, so, all of those people. So, of Negro so and Indian descent. 
white. No, they're not part of it. Uh, no. Any other nation, No. they can't be saved. No. No matter what. Be saved from what? Like uh, the secret salvation of, of, of Christ. What, what, what is Christ coming to save us for? From our so sin. A lot of people don't even understand that. From our sin. Luke 168. Let's find out what it's talking about. Luke 1 verse 68. This, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people. One of the ways that Christ visited his people is that he came and he gave the Israelites back their nationality. He visited them by showing them that they're the Israelites of the Bible. Come on. And has raised up an horn of salvation. And have raised up a horn, meaning a power of salvation, which is Christ. The same way that Moses lifted up the serpent, Christ was lifted up to the Israelites. I'm going to tell you straight. Right. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. You know how the condition of the words, you're listening to the words, he's, like, he's using the word us. This, this is what I'm talking about. People's brains are so gummed up, they can't see the Bible at all. Right. That's why they're all messed up. Read all that again. Luke. 1 verse 68, Come on. blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He slipped on the heads. His people is possessive, meaning the people that pertain to Christ. Who is that? The Israelites. They want to sleep on that with the church and talk about all nations. Come on. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us. And have raised up Christ for who? For us. For us. That's in the New Testament, that's in all the Bibles. In the house of his servant, David. And in the house of his servant, David. Once you read that, you're supposed to understand what he's talking about. What is that house of David? David didn't come from all nations. David came out of the nation of Israel. That's right. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. And it was spoken about Christ coming to save Israel all through the Bible, the holy prophets. Which have been since the world began. The Israelites have always been God's people, even before God said, let there be light. That's what it means when it said before the world That's began. That's right. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be what? Saved from our enemies. That's the salvation that the Bible's talking about. That we should be saved from our enemies. So how in the world is all people going to be saved? Well, who's the enemy? Thank you. See how easy that is? That's in all the Bibles of people. <laughs> the salvation is talking about saving Israel from captivity. That's right. I thought, I thought That's what it's talking about. about sin. Well, how are they going to get it if they don't repent? Because the Lord said they're going to kill two-thirds of this nation because they're not going to. Two-thirds of our people are too gummed up so you can understand, too conditioned to understand this. So God's going to kill them. That's written in the Bible. That's right. Only one third is going to make it out of here. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet, he has been since the world began, so we should be saved. That we should be saved, listen, from our enemies. From our enemies. See, they thought the Bible was a fairy tale. So my, so my, that you were so going to be flying around with wings. So my Christian white friends are my enemies? I mean, is it, I don't know, I mean, it, it seems weird. Yeah? You can only answer that question. It don't seem Read like that. that to me. Yeah. And from the hand of all the haters. And from the hand of all the people that hate us. That's who Christ is here to save us from. So when you go through the Lord's Prayer, so you can understand. The Lord's Prayer. What is that talking about? Give me that. Matthew 6. I'm, I'm taking the church again. Yeah, it talks about his kingdom coming. Yeah. Where is his kingdom going to be at? Here on earth. So if his kingdom is going to be here on earth, what kingdom is presently ruling? Right now, it's the uh, white man, the white, okay. the white man. So the is, man. is Christ going to set his kingdom beside this white man's kingdom? No, he's not. So, how's, so somebody's kingdom got to go. Let's read the Lord's Prayer so we can help you people out. Matthew 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father. Wait a minute. Our Father. Possess him. Our Father. Not everybody's Father. Our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be the name of the Most High. Thy kingdom come. Christ's kingdom is coming. Thy will be done. God, on earth. God's will. What is God's will? What is God's will? So you can understand. Well, let's find out. Give me Psalms. 
40 and 8. Let's find out what the will of God is. So we can understand completely what the kingdom of heaven is talking about. Psalm 40 verse 8. I delight to do thy will. Oh my God. This is David speaking. David said, I delight to do thy will, O God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So the laws of God is the will. The laws of God. So that's what's going to be done on this earth. You see how people are all out of, out of order right now? When the laws come down, all this garbage is, is going to be destroyed. You follow me? I saw women in pants is going to be destroyed. Men acting like they want to be women is going to be destroyed. Only thing that's going to run is the laws of God. Every word. Every Praise for me. Oh, fire from Batty Boy and Lesbian. Yeah. I will be done. So God's will is going to be done in earth. In the earth. So if God's will is going to be done in the earth, whose will is currently ruling right now? The white man's will. His will is ruling. So is God, is God going to set his kingdom beside the white man's kingdom? No, he's not. No. So how is he going to get rid of this kingdom? Destroy them. He's going to destroy it with nuclear destruction and fire. Yeah. That's what he's saying. That's the reason why they got the weapons built. It's all recorded in here. God causes man to build the weapons to his own destruction. So the enemies of God, what you're saying is that the enemies We're going to read about the enemies. The people, the people that are in Jerusalem right now. They're going, they're going to go down too. But they are not the Jews. They are the same as the regular white people. Just like this, so you can understand, there's no difference between a so-called Jew and a so-called white man the same way there is no difference between a so-called white man in America and a so-called white man in Germany, a so-called white man in France, a so-called white man in Switzerland, Scotland. They're all the same. That's why they're called Caucasians. Where we at? Now, give me Revelation. Let's find out who Christ gonna fight. So the word world, so you can understand. If I say the word, so I was in, no, hold on. Give me John 3, 16, let me finish that. John 3, 16, let me finish that. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. So what world is Christ talking about here? The world of Israel. Now, could the world really mean everybody? In some context, it could be. But is there a context in which the world only means a certain section of people? Yeah, of course. Of right. Course. Now I'm going to give you an example. If I said world, wide world of sports, am I talking about all worlds? No, you're talking about the, the, sport, the sports. Yeah, so that's letting you know the word world means society. Right. If I say the animal world, what am I talking about? Yeah, the, animal the world of the animals, the society of the animals. If I said uh, sea world, like when the kids go to the pool, sea world, I'm talking about the world of the sea. The yeah. Roman world, so you can understand. The Chinese, that, that, that Chinatown, the world of the Chinatown. That world of the to other people. So what world was Christ talking about here? The world of Israel. That's why I read up. And when you read two verses above that, it talks about Moses. That's the world that Christ came from. No! 
necessary for them to survive.